Hi guys, Amos here once again. So um, today I've got mail. And uh, as you guys can probably tell from the video title, um, this is actually a pair of custom IEMs from Advanced Acoustic Works. This is the uh, AAW AXH. And um, so let's get to unboxing. Let's go. The AAW AXH came in the mail in this yellow envelope inlaid with bubble wrap to protect the contents from damage. And inside the envelope is a matte black cardboard box with the AAW logo enclosed in a protective plastic sleeve. The back has some product information stickers. Um, the box did get slightly squished since it did have to get here through the regular mail, but thankfully the contents are unaffected. Um, in sliding out the inner tray reveals the blue leather carrying case that ships with the AXH. The leather case has a fantastic smooth texture and looks fantastic in person. It's bright enough of a blue to not look too boring, but at the same time it's not too flashy as well. The simple design offers an elegant, understated aesthetic which I personally really like. But sadly, since I'm using these as my daily driver, I find myself seldom bringing this case out with me because I would hate to damage such a pretty case. Opening up the carrying case reveals the IEMs as well as some paperwork. The IEMs are placed in foam disconnected from their cables and alongside is a small cardboard box, underneath of which are a pair of airplane adapters and quarter inch adapters. Inside the cardboard box are the cables which are the 48 inch um, Null Audio Loon Series detachable cable as well as a cleaning tool and a small microfiber cleaning cloth. The cables come with a velcro cable tie for easy storage. The AAWAXH actually comes in both custom and universal fits, so mine are the custom fit. I auditioned a demo set at CanJam earlier in the year and uh, I placed an order then and there for a pair. I was able to have my impressions taken at the booth itself as well as enjoy a 20% CanJam discount on the unit. At the AAW booth, I actually auditioned the A3H AXH as well as the then upcoming ASH. I thought the demo for the A3H were a tad dull and flat, with a bit too much of an emphasis on the lows for my personal taste. And the ASH on the other hand were on the other hand of the spectrum, <laughs> being bright to the point of being dangerously close to being sibilant. But this tuning, however, revealed many new details and intricacies in the recordings that I once thought I was familiar with, and it also breathed new life into some of my most beloved orchestra recordings. And the new addition to the family, the ASH, it actually shares some of the strengths of the AXH, but manages to sound more elegant and pleasing. The highs are not as harsh, and the overall tuning is much, much more inoffensive. But I couldn't really justify the price tag on the ASH, so I decided to go with the AXH instead. One thing that I really liked is uh, how silent and pliant the cables are. It doesn't really retain memory and doesn't really suffer from uh, microphonics issues. But I'm a little bit surprised with the unit itself because first of all, the tuning is quite different from what I heard at CanJam. I mean, I know that the differences will be inevitable you know, between the universal and the custom versions of the same IEM, but the difference here is huge. The bright and detailed tonality which I was you know, after is pretty much gone in the custom version that I received. Now don't get me wrong, it's still a bright pair, but it's nowhere near what had charmed me at CanJam. And actually, the unit itself, um, the audio from the left side also seems to sound a tad bit louder, and the uh, voices that are center pan seem to tilt left. The cables had some intermittent issues um, from the terminating end, because the shrink wrap actually doesn't look very tight, and uh, when the cable is anything but straight at the terminating end, um, I will get chunks of audio disappearing. And actually, um, the Velcro cable tie that comes with the cable I find that it actually tends to get caught onto many, many different types of textures, different types of cloth textures. So it will get caught inside the case and sometimes even onto foam padding. So I found it too much of a hassle to use. So I usually just um, opt for an over and under wrap. Uh, currently, my pair is still under warranty, but I'm honestly not so sure about bringing them down. Because for one, the opening hours are only from 1.30 noon to 5.30 in the evening from Tuesdays to Fridays, which is kind of inconvenient. And the hassle of needing to bring it down and having to live without my daily driver, I, I don't know. Also, the fit actually isn't really perfect because the left, I mean, the left side is a bit more tolerable than the right side. The right side is a little bit loose to me. 
um, but it's past the refit period and I really can't be bothered to you know, gonna get a whole new set of impressions and go through the whole thing all over again. Overall impressions, mm, it's not bad. I don't hate it, but um, I can't actually definitely say that I love it. Yeah, that's about it. So that was a quick unboxing of the AAW AXH as well as a summary of my impressions of the custom version of this IEM based on the past few months of using it. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, see you next time.